Today, I will discuss developmental networks by looking at a hypothetical network on thorny dragons. Today, we will learn to predict whether the thorny dragon skin cells will produce spikes or not. I will start here by explaining the connections on the networks, which I will explain by relating them to the locked and unlocked door method, similar to how I did in the second mini video I made where I explained single recessive epistasis. The best way to understand the connections is to look at the arrows as keys, which means you have an open door allowing a gene to go through and be transcribed. If there is a T-bar, you do not have a key and cannot open the door, which means the gene is blocked and cannot continue through and be transcribed. There are five genes in this developmental network that will determine whether or not the thorny dragon skin cells will produce spikes or not. S, P, I, K, and E genes. Looking at this wild type example, the S gene will activate the P gene. The P gene will inhibit the I gene, whose function is to inhibit the K gene from being blocked. This means the K gene activates the E gene, which is the gene responsible for producing skin cells with spikes. In this case, spikes are produced since the I gene that inhibits the K and E genes is inhibited by the P gene, allowing E to be stimulated, producing spikes. The first mutant cell we will look at cannot produce the P gene, and anything before that we do not have to look at. A mutation in the P gene will not inhibit the I gene, which means the I gene is functional, so it will inhibit the K gene, therefore the E gene will not be stimulated. This results in skin cells with no spikes. This next mutant cell does not produce I, and remember, anything before that doesn't matter. The K gene will not be inhibited and will be functional, allowing the E gene to be stimulated, producing skin cells with spikes. This next mutant is a double mutant cell that does not produce I or E. Since E is later than I in the network, anything that shows up before E doesn't matter, and since we don't have E, the skin cells will not produce spikes. This time, we have another double mutant for S and K genes. And since the K gene is further downstream in the network, we do not have to worry about anything that comes before it. Without K, E will not be stimulated, meaning the skin cells will not produce spikes. Sometimes, skin cells of the thorny dragon may not have spikes, while some skin cells may have lots of spikes, even though the cells have the same genetic makeup. A way to possibly explain this occurrence is through transcription factor expression. One cell could have a repressor bound to the operator, which can prevent the expression of the E gene. This would prevent spikes from being produced. A different cell, though, might not be expressing that repressor and will be able to stimulate E, allowing the production of spikes to occur. Another possible explanation of this occurrence is that not all cells need to be spiked. Some cells might require spikes, like on the thorny dragon's outer surface of the skin where they can be used for protection. Some cells don't need spikes though, like the cells inside the thorny dragon's skin that simply make up the skin, but do not serve any protective function. Here are the external sources used for the production of this video.